I don't want to live in Melbourne. I don't want to be a principal. And the school is in a lousy spot and it's obviously struggling. But then a remarkable thing happened. For the next four hours as I flew across the continent, there was this really, really strong impression that I could not shake that God wanted us to be here. I've always maintained that there is a partnership and God is the senior partner and I am the junior partner. I am the replaceable part. He is the irreplaceable part. Welcome students, staff, families and invited guests. Today is a sad but special day in which we can give thanks and farewell our principal, Dr Mark Fadell, after 26 years of faithful service at Gilson College. I met Mark 16 years ago and have worked with him for the past 12 years at Taylors Hill and now Mernda campus. From the moment I met him, I quickly learnt that he loved the Lord and saw Gilson as a light there to shine the love of Jesus in the community. This vision and purpose has inspired us all over the years to see that our contribution at the college is to serve students and families through excellence in education and sharing the love of Jesus for all. Our work as educators in this school is mission work and we have been called to serve at this time. This is something that Dr Vodell has led and advocated for his entire time at Gilson. There is so much I could share about our principal, his love for learning, his dedication to students and staff, his excellent sense of humour and positive attitude for life. However, in the quiet moments of our conversations, he has always said, love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind. Mark, you have led our school, putting God first in all your plans. Your humility, compassion and care for us has never wavered. You have always fought for us in order to make this college the amazing place that it is to learn and work. I could speak of all your achievements, but there are too many to mention. But I know you would only want to be remembered for one thing, that you are a man of God. And I can honestly say you are indeed that. Thank you for everything you've done for us all, for being a wise counsellor, boss and friend. I'd just like to share this poem to end by Grady Poulard, which I feel speaks to the character of who you are, and it's called The Measure of a Man. The measure of a man is not determined by his show of outward strength, or the volume of his voice, or the thunder of his actions, or his intellect or academic abilities. It is seen rather in terms of the love that he has for his family and for everyone the strength of his commitments, the genuineness of his friendships, the sincerity of his purpose, the quiet courage of his convictions, the fun, laughter, joy and happiness he gives to his family and others, his, life, his love of life, his patience and his honesty, and his contentment with what he has. Greetings, Gilson. College murder guests, community, friends, family, students and staff. Welcome to this most significant of assemblies. I have known Dr. Vodell for 26 years and he would say that I am a boomerang. I worked with him in the beginning of his Gilson chapter and I so enjoyed the first stint that I came back for more as head of campus in 2013. We're once again working uh, alongside Mark and the Gilson team. It was easy to recognise that Mark Vodell 
worked in partnership with God. Today we honour and acknowledge an outstanding educator and exceptional leader, concluding a significant chapter in the history of Gilson College, but in his career. As I process the length of his tenure, I am overwhelmed at the service, sacrifice and dedication that Dr Mark Vodell and his beautiful wife Sharon Vodell have given Gilson College for this extraordinary length of time. How is it possible to summarise your tenure? Just like the Taylors Hill campus, the initial years at Mernda were difficult, but they were happy years, establishing foundational pillars that now stand firm. Things that we uh, will be remembered are uh, Mark's God-honouring principled leadership and devoted care over our school and staff. Under patient and gracious mentoring and guidance, staff have learned, grown and appreciated more fully what it means and what it takes to serve effectively in an Adventist school. I, alongside countless others, have enjoyed so much watching and working alongside a skilled and competent leader at work, managing personal and professional life skillfully. His shared leadership model and willingness and eagerness to involve the team in making major decisions, or his dedicated, on the task, sincere to the core, calm, under pressure attitude, well, it was strategically um, working towards building up better practice and quality education. Your understanding of the background of each one of our students, your systematic approach to things and the emphasis of seeing things visually and clearly before decision was made, a consistently enthusiastic principle you were and you maintained that firm, fair approach to anything that you dealt with, always pointing towards the Father. Your storytelling, it's legendary and experiences broad and wide. How on earth can a, one man have so many experiences to share from? But advice has always been sincere and wise and actions always taken with mindful consideration and a visual or a diagram would always help you get that proposal across the table. And I would say that every staff member here knows the benefits of vitamin C and horseradish. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Verdell always would take every opportunity to get into that classroom and if we were busy and someone needed to get a step in, my goodness, he would jump at that opportunity. Mr. Verdell considers it a privilege to know his families and to walk alongside them through their journey of raising their children. This is a school home partnership and this is recognised and valued. Your prayers for the school that the angels that excel in strength will cover and protect your students and families will be missed. The value of moments and power of influence is significant. The joy of rich conversations and sharing of life experience with parents and students after a dedication evening, long after everyone has gone, but you are connecting still with those last students. Or maybe in the evening when uh, the parent has come late and he connects with the student, talking, uh, building up a conversation. Playing soccer or basketball with the students at recess or lunch, or staff room lunchtime conversations and laughter. That me and my classroom teaching experience. That Sovereign Hill Year 5 camp, Year 12 retreats, countless send-offs to camp, public information nights, award ceremonies, the chaplain conducting a baptism, and then the special extraordinary visits from an ex-student that drops in to say hi after many, many years. Or the student that has graduated and is, a, is a working in a hospital and recognises you in emergency and assists you. You have totally enjoyed the college environment and like a proud father, you have watched each cohort over the last 26 years. All these approaches and experiences have endeared you to your students, staff and parents and with time we will, with gratitude, revisit our conversations and experiences and the memories will serve us well.
Your legacy of investing in God and investing in people is captured in Matthew 6, 21. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You have invested into Gilson College because God laid this on your heart. You have invested into God and into people. Treated students and staff and parents in this community like a treasure and a treasure to make this world a better place, recognising that excellence in education is wonderful, but it is incomplete if we don't acknowledge that there is nothing without God. We recognise that your heart has been here and present throughout. Thank you. Mrs. Bodell, you have shared your husband selflessly. It is clear you are a team, a very strong team, and he would not be able to have done what he has or given what he has uh, had it not been for your shared love for God and people. And I know you love especially little people. There, has been, there have been countless behind the scenes acts of service expressed in your loving, packed, healthy daily lunches. There's, yes, they are a symbol of your love, but they have sustained him so he could be his best and endure the daily stresses and long hours. You have been an awesome team and thank you for your incredible service. Gilson College has great hope and a bright future as the team build up the solid legacy of developing and equipping our young people intellectually, emotionally, socially, spiritually and physically so they can be, face life well while learning to respect God, others and inspire the heart. This will be carried in the hearts of this Gilson College community. Mark Verdell, you have faithfully guarded the special character of this college as a loyal servant leader. Our prayer is that the deeds of faithfulness, care and compassion continue to shine not only in those entrusted to continue the work of growing and caring of our young people, but all of us who have seen the power of a servant heart. You have empowered your staff and watch, enjoyed watching them grow as well. You will now have the pleasure of watching from afar how they will build up your legacy and what an exciting and privileged position that is. May the community comprise of men and women who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. Education, page 57. Only in heaven will you know the full story of your influence and we are beyond grateful for the godly legacy you and your wife leave behind. You have for decades built up your staff, instructed, taught and guided. The mantle is now passed on. With all my heart and with the blessings of all present here, we wish you a prosperous next chapter in your life, as this one has been. Richly blessed will be the community you and Sharon join, and it is a guarantee that you will find valuable and helpful ways to engage yourself in the service of God and humanity. With gratitude, we applaud you for all that you have done for the college, students, families and staff. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you both. Thank you for your service and giving to the Lord. Thank you, Mrs. Dolvin and Mrs. Jacopeg. Mr. Vodell and Mrs. Vodell. As chaplains at the school, Pastor Trent and I appreciate that we have been and we still are privileged to work along incre alongside incredible leaders of faith here at Gilson Moonga. Never has there been a moment to doubt that first and foremost, our leaders' conversations have always shown the same care for people as Jesus would have done. Mr. Bodell and Mrs. Bodell, you have quietly modelled and led that culture from the top. You've treated every one of us on staff with warmth and respect, and only because of that have each of us also been able to maintain our passion for serving in the same spirit as Jesus' kindness and love. Your door's always been open, and your counsel has been sprinkled with wise suggestions and lots of anecdotes, but never ever directives. You welcomed our suggestions and you shared important past reflections and your smiles to this day have never betrayed the behind the scenes demands and deadlines that have been expected of you. And Mrs. Vodell, our sincerest thanks 
to you also because as one of our first PA admin ladies reminded me this morning, she said, you have allowed Mr. Vodell to give 100% to Gilson College. Thank you, Mrs. Vodell. Pastor Trent has deeply appreciated your servant leadership. Like Jesus, you've always shown humility, serving beside us and not above us, and no job is beyond you stepping in when needed. For this and so much more of what you've given to Gilson College, can we all say thank you, as, we would say, as you would say to the big man above. And I'm going to start with prayer now. Could we all bow our heads? Wonderful, loving, all-knowing, and forever Father in heaven. All of our heads are bowed right now because we want to thank you for bringing Mr. and Mrs. of Odell into our lives and our community for these past 10 years here at Mernda. Today, Lord, we share this program of thanksgiving. We know Mr. V would have us turn all thanks to you. But Father, we humbly ask that you adorn Mr. and Mrs. Vodell with the honour of your gratitude for a job well done. And one day when Jesus returns very soon to take us to our forever homes, that they will hear your voice. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Father, we commit this program of thanksgiving to you in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. Amen. It's my privilege now to welcome the primary choir and Mrs. Borgeli. And the primary choir are going to sing a song for you. He is the light of the world. Thank you, Mrs. Borgeli and primary choir. Hi today, how are you going? 
Hi, Chloe. I'm doing good. No, it's not I'm doing good. It's I'm doing well. This is a memory that many students have shared of Mr. Bodell. A very good afternoon to the principal, Mr. Bodell, and teachers, parents, and fellow students. It is an honour that we are able to stand here to give a speech on this special and memorable assembly. To bid farewell to our beloved principal and celebrate the 26 years he has served in our school community. As you have heard, Mr. Vodell is actually a Dr. Vodell, and from now on, will we, will we, we will be referring to him as such. For 26 years, Dr. Vodell has been the principal of Taylor's Hill, and 10 of those years have been the principal here at Manda. Students have reflected that since the very first day of Gilson College Manda, Dr. Vodell has been a great support to all the students, welcoming them into the school community with open arms. Dr. Vidal worked tirelessly to build this small school of 48 students into this amazing place where we can come every day to learn more about God, something he is so passionate about. I can remember last year when we needed a teacher for our religion and society classes and he stepped up for a few weeks. We asked some pretty challenging questions about stories in the Bible, but he was always able to give us an answer. I'm not going to lie, it was also really fun. We could tell that he loved God and spent lots of time with him, and I look up to him for that. I know that pretty much everyone can agree that no matter what, if you walked past Dr. Verdell or he walked past you, he would always have a huge smile on his face and would stop and ask how we were going. I'm sure that that will be something that everyone here will miss as it put a smile on our faces, no matter how we were feeling. My favorite memory is actually pretty funny. It was after the 2018 AFL Grand Final. If you don't know, I support Collingwood and Dr. Vodell West Coast. Now when both teams made it to the grand final, I think you may know what happened. Collingwood lost and I couldn't even watch the last five minutes of the game. When we got back to school though, Ms. Dr. Vodell decided to wear his special West Coast Eagles tie, which I will never forget. I think he was a bit happy that his team won the premiership. Tomorrow they're playing against each other again and may the best team win. <laughs> I can't forget to mention the editorial. And for those who read the editorial that Dr. Veldell writes in the newsletter every week, you can agree that, they'll be, that we're all going to miss that. They are definitely worth a thought. If you don't read them, go back and have a look. They're really good. One of my favorite ones is from term three last year. It was about Kenzin and our bodies, and that it's not by random chance that our bodies have been made so complex. Dr. Vidal will be sharing his last It's Worth a Thought this afternoon. Dr. Vidal, you have been the principal here for 10 years now. Gilson College is going to miss you, your smile, and your editorials every week. And I will also miss our talks about Collingwood and West Coast. So on behalf of the students, teachers and parents, we say thank you for all you have done for this community and we bless you as you move on to the next chapter in your life. We now warmly welcome Devani, our first school captain, who is with us today representing our Gilson College Manda alumni, the students who have graduated these past three years of VCE. Welcome Devani. Thank you Chloe and Danae. Hello everyone, my name is Devani and I'm a Gilson alumni and one of the first school captains of Gilson College Manda. I also happen to be Mr. Verdell's favourite school captain to have ever existed. <laughs> All jokes aside, I've done many speeches at this college, but I think this is by far one of the most emotional ones for me. I remember when I first joined this school and Mr. Verdell took my interview to join Gilson and I remember being so intimidated at first, but as I talked and conversed with him, I thought to myself, well, wow, that's a smart and gentle man. From then on, there were numerous times where he proved that, not only being intelligent, but also kind and compassionate through stories he would tell us in the common room or in assemblies. In fact, he has flexed on us pretty hard and is now Dr. Vodell after his PhD. Through our ups and downs I have had at any time during my school journey, he has been present and demonstrated constantly to be an amazing role model and a person that everyone can strive to be more like. Now, I know this is a lot of compliments coming from me, but I mean exactly what I say <laughs> because Mr. Verdell has been a backbone for Gilson College and this community, and I speak for everyone when I say you will be missed. I also have a few words from Melwyn, who was the second best captain of Gilson, 
and <laughs> who was extremely apologetic that, that he couldn't attend as due to uni commitments. He says, it has been an honor and pleasure being both a student and staff member under Mark Burdell. His contributions to Adventist education and his influence on the lives of those around him will be greatly missed. One thing I'll always remember about Mr. Verdell is that he told me each Sabbath he has a goal to talk to someone he doesn't know and to make a new friend. Beyond his phenomenal work as a teacher and a principal, Mr. Verdell was something more, a great man. From anything to the weekend footy or to politics, there wasn't a time Mr. Verdell wouldn't be down for a chat. Another great memory is in my earliest secondary school days when we missed lunchtime due to a test and had no one to supervise us for lunch, Mark Verdell instantly took off his suit jacket and decided to come play basketball with us on the court. Such actions deeply reflect the commitment he has towards the school community and people in general. I just wish he wasn't a West Coast Eagles fan. <laughs> Mr. Verdell, you're a smart guy. There's a lot of things you know, but you'll never fully understand the impact you've had on students. Cheers and God bless. I now welcome the primary school captains, Shweta and Rayon, on stage. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Rayon. I'm sorry that my fellow captain, Shweta, is not, is not able to be here with us today. As you are all aware, we have assembled today to farewell our wonderful principal, Dr. Verdell. He has been a pillar for school community for the past 26 years. Throughout his time here as principal, he has made many contributions to our school. We would now like to invite Dr. and Mrs. Verdell to join me on stage. As a token of our appreciation, we would like to present you with this Akubra hat for your dreams of owning your own farm in the Hunter Valley. We would also like to present you with this photograph taken on a year nine learning for life hike on the top of Mount Feathertop. It has a special Bible verse reminder for you. The students have also written some letters and cards for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Mrs. Verdell, we know that the contributions of Dr. Verdell have only been possible because of your continued support for him. These flowers are for you to show our appreciation. Dr. Verdell, your smile would light up a room and your stories would brighten up our days. We would like to remind you that God will be with you every step of the way in this new chapter of your life. You will be missed by us all and we will keep you in our hearts forever. For the years of service to our staff, our students and the families past and present, we say thank you. Dr. Burdell is now going to share with us his final It's Worth a Talk. Thank you for the, uh, to the school captains and the students that have spoken and the staff that have said uh, so many things. Look, uh, I'm going to have to get the checkbook out again, I guess, um, for all those uh, wonderful things that you've said. Um, and uh, yes, Devani, it was interesting to hear you be complimentary. She's known as one of the best sledges around, actually. She can, uh, she can really take the, the mickey out of you uh, there. It was about 26 years ago that uh, my wife and I were living in Western Australia and uh, 
we had a new house. Uh, we were living in Les Murdy, for those of you who know Perth. It overlooks the city of Perth, and uh, um, we had great, great views, and uh, it, was, uh, it was interesting. Uh, I had a 15-minute bike ride um, across into the, the, the Bickley Valley for me to get to work. And uh, our children had been born in the local hospital there, and uh, uh, it was a boarding school, and that meant extra work, but I enjoyed that. And uh, I guess you could sum it up by just simply saying, life was good. It was pretty good. I've never wanted to live in Melbourne, or Sydney for that matter. However, I happened to be here in 1995, and I was here with some meetings. And uh, while I was here, some people asked me whether I wanted to be the principal of Gilson College. I didn't. I've never wanted to be a principal. Some people aspire to be a principal. Some people will do anything they can to get to be a principal. But that's never been me. I've always been in my happy spot um, when I've been on the basketball courts, being beaten by the students, um, or being out in a camp uh, somewhere, or running the My Mission trip and being in the classroom while I've been there. And so I really didn't want to. And, uh, but while I was here, they said, well, look, at least consider it, and we'll take you out and show you the Taylor's Hill campus. And so we jumped in a car and we drove out there and we had this Outback Australian experience. You left the bitumen and then you descended onto the dirt road and you continued. And uh, there on the dirt road, um, stuck out in a grass paddock, were a couple of portables and one single building. And some of you will remember what that looked like because as I look around, I see a few staff that have actually served time. That, that actually sounds like a prison sentence, doesn't it? <laughs> no, um, but have spent time or enjoyed time on the other campus there. And it looked pretty ordinary. So I remember climbing on the plane going to go back to Perth, thinking, I don't want to live in Melbourne, I don't want to be a principal, and the school's in a lousy spot and it looks like it's struggling. It was pretty clear to me, but then a remarkable thing happened. I got on the plane, and for the next four and a bit hours, there was this strong, overwhelming sense that God wanted us here in Melbourne. I can't explain it. I don't know how to describe it. But when I got home, I told my wife what the place looked like. And her eyebrows went up. And they stayed up. And she was like, oh, really? Oh, wow. Oh, like that. Mm. And then I said, I think we need to go. Then the eyebrows got lost in the hairline. You know, it was one of those things where it just seemed that God wanted us here. Six months after we got to Taylor's Hill, our head office voted to close down many of our schools, and Gilson College was included in that due to financial reasons. And I can recall the meeting that we had there where we were able to delay that decision. And in the meantime, God blessed our little school immensely. And when I walk around that campus, I see many examples of prayers that were answered. When I walk around this campus, the whole campus is an answer to prayer. It's just amazing. Let me tell you, I would love to take the credit, but when you read or when you hear the story, it is evident that I was just part of the story and the main man was behind it all. I want to say thank you to the many people that have worked with us over the years. The team has grown and continued to grow. Originally there was just 
seven of us. Three teachers in the primary school, three teachers in the high school, and myself. And that was our full-time cohort. Now there is around about 120 teachers on both campuses, and it's a privilege to have been a part of that team. I've heard one or two people mention about my connection with God, and I just want to state, I have not always been a Christian. I have not always been a Seventh-day Adventist. But our family wanted to try and find out and make sense of the world that we live in. And when we began to do that, we began to ask and seek answers to the big questions in life. What are the big questions? Where did I come from? What are my origins? How did I get to be on the planet here? And then at the other end, what happens to me when I die? It happens to us all. In fact, I actually did hear that because I'd been on long service leave, one of the young ones said, where's Mr. Vodell? Did he die? <laughs> and uh, Mrs. Delvin was able to say, no, he's very much alive and well. Uh, uh, yeah, but you know, that will happen to everybody at some stage. And so the question is, what does happen to us? And if we don't ask, answer those questions, then all the stuff in the middle that we call life can become quite meaningless. And so our family tried to find some meaning in the chaos. And we discovered the Adventist church, people that worshipped on Sabbath believed that Jesus was coming back and that there were three angels that had three messages. I've spent a good deal of my time, as you may have heard there, reading, studying, researching. And I think that I've read just about every major religious or sacred text. Everything from Baha'i to Zoroastrianism and everything in between. And there's only been two sacred texts that have made sense to me and that have the evidence to back them up. The first one is called the Tanakh. It's what the Jews call it. And we Christians refer to it as the Old Testament. And in that Old Testament, there are 300 predictions that there will be a Messiah. They predicted where he would be born, when he would be born, where he would grow up, that he would be ambushed and that he would be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver, that he'd be mocked, that he'd be crucified, that he would die, that he would then be put in a tomb, that he would rise up again, that he would get and be killed with bad men, but he would be buried with the rich men. All those details. And you know, when I think about all of them, the odds of one man fulfilling that is somewhere immense. In fact, it's 10 to the power 17, if you want to know the maths on it. That's a one with 17 zeros beside it. You know, the Bible uses lots of symbols. And when you understand them, it makes sense. But if you don't understand them, then it can all be a little bit confusing. And you here, living in Melbourne, understand symbols. Because if I was to say that the magpies were playing the cats, you would know exactly that a team from Collingwood was going to play a team based in Geelong. We'll leave West Coast out of it at the moment. They're not going too good. Thanks, Chloe. Uh, I think they're none from three at the moment and they're at the bottom of the ladder. Uh, yeah. So we understand symbols and the Bible is full of symbols. And the Bible predicted that Jesus would come. And when he did come, he made a whole stack of other promises and predictions. He predicted that Jerusalem would get destroyed and the temple would be removed, and it happened. He predicted that there would be people that would leave 
that particular part of the world and it happened. Just time and time again, everything that Jesus said has come true, except one thing. There's been one thing that he said that has not yet happened. And it was when he said, I'll be back. Now, he didn't say it like Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? He actually said it as a promise. And so sometimes when people say to me, Mark, do you really believe that a bloke's going to come out of the sky and change the world that we live in? I go, yeah, because all the evidence has been and shown that everything else he said has come true. And that's why I guess I have that confidence. I remember one time, one of my friends, who was also a believer but had some questions, and he said, you know what? There is so many people in the world, some of them that have never even heard the word Jesus. They don't even know the guy. Think of all the Muslims, the Buddhists, and the Hindus around the world that have never even heard that. How's that going to work? And it was years ago, and I remember saying to him, David, I don't know. But more recently, I have perhaps just a little bit of an idea. Since the year 2000, Jesus has been appearing to Muslims in their dreams and in their visions all around the world. And he has been there inviting them to follow him. If you take a look at a website entitled Dreams of Isa, ISA, you can read the stories of hundreds of people who have had dreams of a man dressed in white. Around about 120 countries are represented every month. It's truly remarkable. Now, you will not read or hear of this on Channel 9 or 7 on the 6 o'clock news. They seem to forget about those sorts of things. But let me tell you that people are posting their dreams and asking, what does this mean? There's this, I had a man in my dream, dressed in white, saying, follow me. Dreams of Isa. Check it out. You know, my wife and I spend just 15 minutes every day reading the scriptures together. And that allows us to read from Genesis right through to Revelation every year. And each year we choose a different translation just to sort of mix it up, I guess. Let me tell you, I don't recommend you to do that. Why? because the Bible's got all those symbols and if you don't understand them and you don't understand the historical context, it will confuse you. So what do I recommend? There's one book in the Bible that I'm going to recommend. And someone down the front, which book of the Bible do you think that I'm going to recommend to you? Yes, Genesis. That's a good suggestion, but that's not the one for today. All right, excellent. All right, what about another suggestion? Yes? Yes? Revelation. Wow, we've gone from one end to the other. And that's another good suggestion, but that one's got lots of symbols in it and it gets really tricky. So it's not that. Think carefully. What would I recommend to read? Any suggestions? Yes? John? Very, very, very close. That's outstanding. Okay, up there. Wow, we're bouncing all around it. And that also is very close. Yes? Thank you, yes, excellent there. Ali, uh, Alex, Miles, sorry, terrible to, be, terrible, terrible to be called by your older brother's name, isn't it? Miles, thank you very much. Mark, the book of Mark, because that's easy for you to remember when you see me, you'll say, oh, what book did he recommend? The book of Mark. And you know what? It's the shortest of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And when you see me, you'll remember that too, won't you? All right. Yes, the book of Mark. You can read that one. And it'll give you the story and it'll help you make sense. And if you read a little bit of it every day, just a little bit, and think about it, 
It will change your life. And you will be able to make meaning out of the chaos that we live in. You know, last year, when we were having, and the year before, when we were having all those lockdowns and the vaccines and so on, we got a phone call on the other campus. A lady rang up and she said, I have some questions. I want to talk to Mr. Vodell. And so I took the message and I asked the receptionist, I said, what, is, what are her questions? She said something about Mark of the Beast. And I went, oh, that's interesting. So I spoke to the family. And the mother said, do you think that all these lockdowns, all this, that, this, this crazy stuff that's happening, do you think this is to do with the end of the world and the Mark of the Beast? Now, some of you probably don't even know what the Mark of the Beast is. It's mentioned in the Bible a number of times. Right? And I said to her, no, it's not. And she said, but there's a section. I remember we read somewhere where it says you can't buy and sell. And that's what's happening now. People are losing their businesses. We can't buy, we can't sell. It sounds like the mark of the beast. And I said to her, you're referring to Revelation chapter 13 right, and verses 15, 16, 17 around there. She said, you know it. I said, yes, I'm familiar with it. And I said, if you read chapters 13 and 14, it mentions a word. There's a word in there that tells you what the mark of the beast is. What's the mark of the beast? It's when you go to the dark side, as opposed to being supportive of God. And she said, oh, what's the word? I said, I told you, read Revelation 13 and 14. It's in there about seven or eight times. She says, don't be like that, just tell me. And I got soft, I got weak. And so I told her, and guess what? I'm going to tell you what the word is, what it's all about. Worship. That's what it's about, worship. It's not about vaccines and it's not about all these other things. It's about who we worship, how we worship, when we worship. And so if our world ever gets there and gives a mandate and this is the, probably the most important thing that I will share with you. So if you don't remember anything else, remember this, that if our world ever puts a mandate out about worship, then sit up, remember what I've said, and take notice of what's going on. And you will know that those mandates, those forced things about worship, are not from God, because God never uses force it's always volunteers when it comes to connecting with God. And that's how we should always be, volunteers. So, for us, it's a change of scenery. One chapter is coming to an end, and a new chapter is going to begin. And so, for Mrs. Vodell and I, we will be over the next couple of months moving to the Hunter Valley, where we both grew up as children. In fact, let me tell you a little secret. In year seven, Mrs. Vodell was my girlfriend. Uh -huh. and, oh, that's it, yeah, oh. And you know what? She still is. Uh, and so, I want to make it very clear to you that we are not moving on because I didn't like my job. We are not moving on because of the people that I worked with and that I didn't like them either. No, not at all. And I'm certainly not moving on because of the great students of Gilson College. We will miss all of you immensely. Over the years, there have been thousands of students and parents and people that we have got to know and that we have got to love. And I've had lots of emails, and I've had texts and phone calls. In fact, last night, it was 10 o'clock at night, my phone rang and I thought, somebody's trying to sell me electricity or something. I know, you know. And it was a student that had graduated 20 years ago. She's an anaesthetist these days. And that's a doctor that puts you to sleep before the operation. 
And she had found and tracked down my telephone number. I said, how did you get my telephone number, Elaine? And she says, uh, my dad had it in his phone. And she said, I, I, I snuck a look in his phone. And I've just had so many phone calls from so many people. And we have been humbled by the appreciation and the gratitude that has been shown by the people who know us. However, now the decision has been made and we're focusing on the positives and we will be closer to our family. Our children live in northern Sydney and so we're going to be closer to them. The weather will allow me to use my mini moak more regularly. And if you're not sure what a mini moak is, Google it. Right. They're a car without doors. Right. And I will be able to use that more often. So finally, we know that God is faithful and that the stories in the Bible, like Joseph and Daniel, they've inspired me and reminded us that we rely on God. All other ground is sinking sand. Actually, those words come from a very old hymn that one or two of you might recognise. All other ground is sinking sand. I could sing that for you if I chose, but we don't want to clear the area just right now. Okay? So I will refrain from doing it. And on that note, pun intended, I'm going to finish and say, may God bless you and the families that you represent abundantly. Good afternoon, Gilson College Manda. It's wonderful to be here. My name's Jean Carter, and I actually represent all of the Adventist schools in Australia, along with Dr. Daryl Murdoch and Mr. Jacques Calais, who couldn't be here today. But we came here especially to honour your principal, Dr. Mark Vodell, and his wife, Mrs. Vodell. They have been wonderful advocates of Adventist education for many, many years. Our purpose for Adventist education is to reveal Jesus. And I can see that's what Dr. Vodell has done for you every, every day that you've been here at Mernda. I'm going to ask you to do something, because I know you've been sitting for a while, OK? So I'm going to ask a question. And the answer, I'll tell you the answer, it's actually Dr. Vodell, okay? So I'm going to ask you a question and then I all want you to turn and look and point and answer my question, Dr. Vodell. Okay, can you do that? Yeah, that's Here we go. And I want to see, I, I've heard that primary is often a little bit louder than secondary because secondary are too cool to do stuff like this. So primary, you've got to carry this out for me. And even the mums and dads, I want you to join in too, okay? First question, you ready? Who has been the best principal so far at Manda? <laughs> Woohoo, you've got the idea. Now let's see how you. Who likes to play with you in the playground when he has the time? <laughs> yes! And the third question, who likes to share Jesus with you every time he sees you? Absolutely, Dr. Vodell, Adventist Schools Australia, honour you and wish you all the best as you move up to the Hunter Valley. Thank you, Dr. Vodell and Mrs. Vodell. I would not be at this school if it wasn't for. Dr. Vodell. My children would not be at this school. We had a very um, a special experience, I, I would call it a miracle, um, where uh, we were not intending to be here and I was actually interviewing as a CRT, an emergency teacher, and the experience that I had in my little interview that lasted two hours, that never happens for an emergency teacher, uh, where I was taken around the entire school and he shared the heart of this school, his vision, his passion um, with little old me, 
turned my heart in a second and I rang my husband and said, there is no way we're sending our children anywhere else but coming here. And God would have to do a miracle financially, but it was going to happen. So I am very thankful, <laughs> incredibly thankful, I can't put that into words, um, for uh, his words and his care so that I am here and my family are here. And this place feels like family. We are going to sing a song for you called Go Light Your World. And um, this song speaks of taking the message of hope that we have, the message of Jesus and his love for us into the world. It is a privilege to be able to sing this to you now. Uh, many of you might know that Mark called our school, calls our school, a light on a hill. Like the scriptures that talk about a city on a hill that shines its light out into the darkness, out into the places that need God's love and truth. We thank Mark for his precious and sacred mission, for his perseverance and his courage in helping this school and wanting this school to be that light, to share God's love and truth with the world. And as a parent, I will forever be grateful that Gilson College exists and has that passion and that light. Thank you for treasuring our school.
invite Dr. and Mrs. Vidal up on stage um, as we invite God to continue to bless their life and ministry. Please bow your heads in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we ask for a continued blessing on Dr. and Mrs. Vidal. We ask that you continue to use them as you have here to bring glory to your name and share your love with everyone around them. Thank you for using them as your hands and feet in our community. All glory to you, God, for the gift of Dr. Vodell as our principal and for giving us such a gracious leader. We know it hasn't always been easy giving one's life in service, and giving one's life in service never is, but it has certainly been worthwhile in this community. We thank you for the way that Dr. Vodell has always been willing to answer your call to serve you. We ask that you to continue to bless the communities that he has supported in Myanmar and the many lives he, imp he has impacted here and overseas. And as they leave our school community, please shower them with your love. Amplify their impact wherever they may go and bless their families. Dear God, we ask that you also be with those who continue the work that Dr. Vodell has started that you continue to grow our community here at Gilson and help us to shine a light onto you and to show your love to others by what we say and do. Bless this school and those who enter its gates. Bless the students before us today as they grow in faith and in knowledge. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to actually ask Dr and Mrs Vodell to remain with us here at the, mo um, at the stage for the moment because the students um, have prepared a, an avenue of honour that they would like to um, bestow upon you as you leave. You're welcome to stay and mingle with um, Dr. Vodell and his wife for a moment before it's time to go home. Uh, so that does complete our program and I'm going to ask students now to stand quietly and to line up with the cones ready for our avenue of honour. Thank you. 